This is the Acer X27U. Of course, not to be confused with the Acer X27U. This one is a 240Hz W OLED 1440p 27-inch panel. And the other X27U is a 480Hz W OLED 1440p 27-inch panel. I know, they don't make it easy. In fact, at least at the time of filming, even Acer got them confused, as there isn't a product page for the newer F3 model, the 480Hz one, they just updated the standard X27U's product page, leaving people like me, and some buyers, confused. To set the record straight though, the currently available version of the X27U, this one here, only supports a 240Hz refresh rate. The newer F3 model, which isn't currently available, will support a 480Hz refresh rate, and you should be able to tell them apart thanks to the much more sort of a techno slash cyberpunk looking stand on the newer F3 model. Got it? Great. Now let's take a look at this one. Being an OLED, naturally, it is lightning fast. Acer claims a 0.03 millisecond response time, and while my equipment says more like 0.3 milliseconds, frankly, who cares? It's effectively instant either way. Sadly, with this being a WL OLED panel, meaning it's an LG panel from with a, a white subpixel in what I think is an RWBG subpixel layout, you get a couple of issues. Text clarity for one, and a pretty aggressive adaptive brightness limiter for another. Text clarity becomes an issue because Windows is blind to the actual sub-pixel layout of your monitor, meaning when it renders text with a bit of anti-aliasing using the sub-pixels, it picks the wrong colors, and you end up with a fuzzy and occasionally off-putting edge to text. QD OLEDs are generally better in that regard, although they still aren't perfect. The other issue, the Adaptive Brightness Limiter, or ABL for short, is a bit more of a problem, at least for me. This one feels like a bit of a step back compared to the likes of the AOC AG276QZD, which is also a WOLED panel, but is a lot faster to cull the brightness down from the maximum uh, to the, the sort of steady state sustainable level. Compare that to the X27U, which takes upwards of 100 milliseconds, if not more, to peak and then trickle back down. You can actually see that in my uh, data from my open source response time tool, which is available at osrtt.com if you're interested, where it peaks. In fact, it clips quite considerably, and then takes over 100 milliseconds to come back down to its steady state level. That was actually noticeable to the eye. It's not quite as bad as the old ARS FO48U, but certainly not as good as the AG276QZD. For gaming though, it's still pretty fantastic. The instant response times coupled with the 240Hz refresh rate makes for a, a buttery smooth gaming experience. Even competitive gaming is on the cards with this thing, especially as the input lag is spot on too. This has the right mix of vibrant colors, fast refresh rates, and instant response times to make really any genre of game pop and play really well. You'll have a great time gaming in this for sure. You'd also have adaptive sync support, meaning both FreeSync and G-Sync work well, again making for a smooth gaming experience. One thing OLEDs often struggle with though is brightness. While Acer claims that this can hit a thousand nits, and I'm sure that it can on a single pixel or two for a few milliseconds, for even a ninth of the screen being at you know, full white, the best that you'll get is a little over 300 nits. With 50% of the screen lit though, the best you get is 200 nits. That's a far cry from the thousand nits claimed, but that's really common, a really common trait, especially for WOLED panels like this. That means that in brighter environments, you might struggle a little. Although in a dark man cave, this will be perfect. Colors wise, I should make it clear that the Spider X2 that I use for these tests isn't great for OLEDs, uh, although the color gamut coverage does look about right at 97% coverage of the DCI-P3 spectrum, although the accuracy figures are um, 
well, they're completely wrong. Uh, Acer is claiming a Delta E of under one, at least potentially for the newer model, either way, which would be phenomenal, and to the eye, I would kind of say that I believe it. It's genuinely vibrant, rich, and despite being a little dim, definitely stunning to look at. Physically, you'll find a pretty nice design. From the back, it's pretty plain, although uh, the panel itself is encased in a thin metal body that screams quality. The control electronics are in a fairly basic looking plastic housing in the middle, where you'll find the two HDMI 2.0 ports, uh, one display port, 1.4 ports, a USB-C port for both display in and USB in, alongside a USB-B port and a two port USB 3 or 3.2 hub, along with audio out and DC in from the included power brick. You'll find the joystick to control the on-screen menu at the bottom in the sensor, and the menu itself is fine. Has all the settings you would expect, actually really pretty in-depth color adjustments with dedicated color space profiles for sRGB, Rec. 709, HDR, EBU, DCI, SMTPE-C, and general, plus six-axis hue and saturation control on top of color temperatures and gamma curves. Yeah, it's a lot. As for the stand, it's a pretty sort of large foot that also sticks out a bit from the back, meaning that it can't sit flush against the wall, but it is nice and stable and features height, tilt, swivel and rotation adjustment. Of course, if you would rather not use the stand, you do get a vase mount under the tool list sort of stand mount that you can use instead. For those concerned with burn-in, while well, WOLEDs do tend to suffer from that a little more, this does have pixel orbiting and auto dimming permanently enabled, plus the option to refresh the panel through the menu. That is a destructive process though, so you'll only want to run that when you have visible or noticeable burn-in. As a point of comparison, the Philips Evnia 8600 that I've been using as my sort of daily driver for months now, possibly even going on a year, uh, which is a QD OLED panel, has never needed to do a full refresh and has no evidence of burn it. QD is definitely the way to go, at least in my opinion. For me, the biggest problem with this iteration of the X27U is that other monitors, even ones with likely the same panels no less, are considerably cheaper. That AOC AG276QZD that I mentioned earlier, which has I think the same panel but a better adaptive brightness limiter, is just £500, whereas the X27U is £900. That's extortionate by comparison. For 500 I could see this being a decent choice, but for 900 no way. Of course, with that said, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the X27U? Is this your next monitor, or would you go with a QD panel instead, or just something else entirely? Let me know in the comments down below. If you are interested in it, I will leave a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. Of course, if you want to test stuff like this yourself, you can pick up my open source response time tool at osrt.com. That's linked in the description too. And otherwise, that's kind of it. You can hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this one on a very regular basis. Check out plenty of other reviews on the end cards. I'll leave the AOC uh, AG276 QZD on the end cards if you do want to check that one out. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you all in the next video.